the TXV inside so we can bring this thing back to life so this house will be cool once again. I took the low voltage off the support. I removed the Y signal, but the contactor was still energized. So there's some malfunction along the way right there. Last time, I think I mentioned at the end of the video, this unit was running even without a call. So that would definitely explain that. Probably a bad defrost control board. Who knows? But keep going. Bye bye now. I'm going to be using a piston on this job, taking that TXV out. It's my sight glass. Some pistons, and what I'm looking for is a 71. There we are. That'll be a good size for our three ton unit here. We're going to remove this old TXV. Take it loose here. Take it loose here. Take it loose up here and remove the sensing bolt and not put a piston in while we're blowing it out and then put it in when we're done. These little pistons are Goodman parts. I bought a Johnstein. We take it, we put our piston in up here. Voila. We get down here and we have our Teflon seal. Put our Teflon seal in. We'll put these two together and then I can put a little sticker up that says what piston it is right here so people will know. We are all put back together. Our piston is in. We have our 71 right there, that's our piston. We put a lid back on our equalizing port right there for the TXV. There's already a Schrader in it. And we need to just remove the strap for the bulb. I'll keep that and we'll move outside. I have finished brazing up. I have my dryer in here, cooling things off. Then I'll pressure check the lines. And if we're good, we'll put it in a vacuum while I connect everything else. Guys, I have about 100 pounds of pressure on the system. All I'm really testing is my few joints out here, and of course where we put the piston in inside. So we should be good to go. Pretty easy brazing. The service valves on this cube unit are kind of strange. I think Steve and them were talking about it. It's one of those things where you can't really get the valve core remover on it. So it's kind of, it's, it's a little odd, but it'd be nice if they were sticking out a little bit farther or a different orientation maybe diagonal or something like that would work but that's neither here nor there this little wiring compartment they have here for this thing there's an outdoor temperature sensor kind of folds back into place right over here it's kind of strange it's just kind of weird how it works I think it'll work fine it's just uh, it's a little odd guys I am weighing in the refrigerant now we have about four pounds in there we're gonna go up to around five it's like John Israel said they don't have a charging amount on the outside so I'm gonna start with five pounds and go from there this is a three ton machine so we should be using more than five pounds for sure you may be wondering why I chose a dry ship machine instead of an R410A machine the reason being is that folks didn't have enough money for that sort of thing so dry ship was the cheapest thing available by several hundred dollars because all of the 13 seer 410A units that I know of are gone and we're all 14 series, so they're a little bit more expensive. So we did the best we could for the customer, and dry ship was what we could do. We could have used 410A on that coil, but it just wasn't in the cards. So I had to put the smart tool on a little differently because of the very steep angle right there. So we have a little hose on it. I'll probably buy a little fitting or a group of fittings in order to have everything I need for any angle that comes my way. This one, the service valves on this one have been kind of ridiculous. Well guys, we're looking pretty good. Our target superheat was around 17. We're bouncing within range here. 230 over 77. Once it all settles out, we should be good to go. Everything's running smoothly. The house is pretty cool because a portable was in there. So I'm about to take it out. But it should stay cool now.